Hey guys, I'm Roxette Arisa, and today we're gonna be doing a look inspired by Shay Mitchell. It is this look right here. It is so beautiful. When I saw it, I just like fell in love, and I've been wanting to recreate it for a while. I'm just obsessed with how warm and smoky and just I'm obsessed with everything about it to be honest. So the um, makeup artist that originally created this look is Patrick Ta. He is Amazing you guys, so I'll definitely link his Instagram down below. He's one of my favorite makeup artists in the entire world world His um his work is just like it's stunning So definitely check him out because he is incredible. I had the chance to meet him at a Dior um, Makeup event a couple weeks ago, and it was so cool. He's so sweet in person, too I was fangirling on the inside not gonna lie, but uh, yeah, I I love his work, so definitely check it out, but if you want to see how I recreated this look and kind of like my interpretation of it, then just keep watching. I know my skin looks a little crazy right now, but don't worry, I'm taking care of it. Um, I'm not picking my skin from now on, so I'm just going to put that out there. Um, for like the hundredth time. But I'm starting off with the Urban Decay Quick Fix Hydrocharge Complexion Priming Spray. I do feel like this helps me achieve that, you know, very glowy look, so that's what I'm using to start off. Then for primer, I'm using the Marc Jacobs Remarkable, or wait, what is this called? The Invisible Undercover Perfecting Coconut Face Primer. Again, just kind of trying to stick with that very hydrating, very dewy base. Then on areas where I really need um, a little bit of extra help, like filling in pores or even, you know, stuff with texture problems, I'll go in with the Tarte Primer. This is the Clean Slate Timeless Smoothing Primer. And this one has more of a putty feel to it, so it helps to really smooth everything out and kind of um, fill in any areas that needs to be balanced. Now for foundation, I'm going to be going in with the Tarte Cosmetics Rainforest of the Sea Water Foundation just because this has a really nice natural finish to it. It's not super matte or anything, but it still has the coverage that I need right now. If you're um, having a better skin day than I am, you can totally go with something like Giorgio Armani Luminous Silk. That one is beautiful for looks like this. Or even um, if you want more drugstore, the L'Oreal Pro Glow Foundation. Those are really good options as well. And I am applying with a brush just because that's going to give us a lot more coverage. But again, if you're having better skin, you can totally go ahead and use um, a blender. But for me, I'm going to stick with the Sigma F80. Next up, I'm going to be moving to eyes like I normally do. So this is the Photo Focus Eyeshadow Primer from Wet n Wild. This is actually really good and it's super affordable. This is what I usually reach for when I'm not trying to cancel out all discoloration, but I still want my shadows to play, to, to stay in place all day long. Not to play in place all day long, but to stay in place. I might have gone a little hands with this, but you know what I say. When in doubt, blend it out, girl. For this look, Patrick used the CoverShot um, Ablaze Eye Palette from Smashbox Cosmetics, so that's what we're going to use. And this is actually a really nice palette. I do get a lot of use out of it because it's just so warm and friendly. Um, I'm going to first take this shade down here, which is called Relaxed, and set that eye primer down with a BH Cosmetics number 8 brush. You can see in the photo, her shadows are taken very high up, so we are going to do that, but I definitely want to build up the shade, so I'm starting off with a MAC 217, taking the shade Dark Horse, and I'm just going to literally put that into the crease and blend upward so that we start to build that gradient effect. And honestly, you can't see the lid too well for this particular look, but I personally think that the brown kind of goes down onto the lid. So we're kind of just going to do that. But, you know, it is up to interpretation at this point. I think I'm going to take a little bit of throwback and a little bit of dark horse and mix those together to create our lid shade. Give me that chocolatey brown. Next up, taking a Sigma E40 and the shade Dark Horse, I'm going to blend out that crease and just make it a little bit more seamless. Then on the same brush and the shade Throwback, I'm going to start to blend it out even more. And I think that this is going to be the key factor in achieving the same look. I can definitely tell there's that really nice warm cranberry undertone to the blending shade. So we are going to start to build that up. 
And again, same brush. I'm taking the shade Nirvana now, which is that really beautiful cranberry. And I'm going to continue to blend the crease out so we get a nice dimension of warm tones. And when you look at Shay's eyes, um, like I said, the shadow does come up really high. But the thing is, it looks very seamless. So what we're going to do is take the same brush, an E40 from Sigma, but a different one. So this is the one I've been using. You want to take a um, new one, uh, something that's a little bit cleaner and then take a shade similar to this. So this is Blur by Melt Cosmetics. It's really dirty because I use it all the time. But this shade, um, this is what we're going to use to kind of literally blur everything out. And like I said, you do want to use a clean brush. If you want, you can always like clean it with a very quick cleaner and then come back to the same brush if you don't have any extras on hand. Or you could just use a different fluffy blending brush. But we're going to take this shade and then go in there and blend everything out keep blending upwards so we're still having that upwards motion but just make it super seamless and we're gonna be here for a while see what a difference that makes in how nice and easy it's blended out this way we can have those shadows extending really high but it looks like it was intentional and that we didn't like mess up and once you've blended for like 20 minutes it should look a little something like this so I am gonna add just a really small um, line of liner um, not a wing but just something to cover up the lash line a little bit and I'm going to be using the Sigma Beauty line ace in the shade legend then I'm going to go in with a coal liner and just smudge that out you can literally use any black coal liner that you have on hand and you just want to take an angled brush and make it a little bit more smoky alrighty time for some mascara and I'm using Maybelline Big Shot for this step then for lashes, I'm taking one of my all-time favorite pairs of lashes. These are Sidior Sienna Lashes, and I'm just going to be applying that with my House of Lashes glue. Then going back into the Melt Cosmetics Dark Matter stack, I'm going to take this bottom shade, which is just a black, so literally any black that you have on hand will do, and I'm going to set the top and bottom lashes, or sorry, I'm going to set the, uh, the lash line on the top and the bottom of those false lashes that we just put on. Moving back to the face, I'm taking my Tarte Cosmetics Cosmetics Shape Tape Concealer in the shade Medium and I'm going to be putting this underneath the eyes as well as down the center of the nose and a little bit on the chin. You don't want to use a shade that's too light for this type of look. She doesn't have that super bright highlight. It's kind of just concealing, um, concealing everything and balancing everything out. Then I'm just blending all of that out with my e.l.f. concealer brush. I am going to be baking with my Laura Mercier translucent setting powder and just locking everything into place. While we bake, I'm going to go ahead and move to contour using my Charlotte Tilbury Filmstar Bronzing Glue. I cannot put this stuff down. And I'm applying with a Morphe M143, just a big fan brush. I've really been liking this technique lately because it gives a very airbrushed finish to the contour line. And after about five minutes or so, you can go ahead and wipe away that excess powder from the bakage. For my lower lash line, I'm going to go back in with that black coal pencil and make it super duper smoky like Shay has. And we're definitely going to smoke that out as well. So it looks like she has a bit of the shade um, Dark Horse. I always forget this one shade name, Dark Horse, Dark Horse, Dark Horse, Dark Horse. So she has a bit of the shade Dark Horse and then it looks like it might be blended out with the shade Throwback. Sorry. Yeah, Throwback. Oh my goodness. I'm not not in the right state of mind to remember eyeshadow colors right now. Then I'm going to take a little bit of a fluffier brush. This is Sigma E25. And this particular one is from the Camila Cabello collection, so it's sparkly. Um, and I'm just going to run that underneath so that we get a nice blend. Then for the inner corner, I'm using the shade Moccasin. It looks like she has just a really subtle, warm, golden undertone to her inner corner. So I think this might be the shade that Patrick used. I love it. And I definitely want to add a little bit more mascara to this bottom lash line. Mayday, mayday. We got a little problem. The little black speck. It's going to ruin my day. Honestly, I don't know if I could get it out without ruining the rest of the look. So it may just have to stay there. No, I'm not going to do it. It's got to be there. It's got to stay there. It'll be our little secret. For bronzer, I'm going to be taking my MAC Cosmetics Give Me Sun on a MAC 135 and really bronzing up the face. That's one thing I love about Shea Mitchell's makeup most of the time is it's very, very bronzed and just, it, it just... It gives it to me, you know what I mean? I know that that little section looks a little crazy. It's because I went 
hams <laughs> on picking that little pimple. Like, I'm telling you guys, hams. Like, I was legit bleeding. Like, whoo, it was, it was bad. That's the one, that's the one that made me realize that it's definitely not a good idea. Well, I re realized it a long time ago, but the most recent realization. So we're gonna take a little bit of a black, or sorry, brown um, liquid liner and just make a little dot so that it's less apparent and it kind of just looks like a mole. Really hard to cover this one today, guys. I think that's kind of like the best that I'm gonna be able to do. For blush, she really doesn't have too much going on. Um, I'm just gonna take a little bit of MAC Cosmetics Sincere Blush right here and apply that with an angled brush just to give a little flush to the cheeks, but again, she doesn't really have that much going on. I'm gonna go in with Ofer Cosmetics Rodeo Drive, and I know a lot of times Patrick actually uses a really small blending brush. I'm not really small, but small for the cheekbones, and takes it and really does precise strokes to get a more defined highlight rather than an all-over glow. With this technique you have a lot more precision as to where the product is being placed and I like to take it up towards the brow bone, even above the brow bone. <laughs> Just, you know, kind of do it wherever you feel. And lastly for the lips, it's the most perfect brown tone nude. So I'm gonna take the Charlotte Tilbury Iconic Nude Lip Cheat and start to line the outer rim of the lips. I'm gonna fill them in too, just because this is a good way to make the lips stay on all night. Then with a BH Cosmetics number no. nine brush, I'm taking Bite Beauty Honeycomb Lipstick, and I'm just going to start to apply that a very, very light layer because we are going to be going in with a gloss after. And for the gloss, I'm taking Kylie Cosmetics Gloss in the shade Exposed. And you definitely want to spray it down with some MAC Fix Plus just to get rid of that powdery residue, and then you are good to go, girl. So this is the finished look. I hope you guys enjoyed. I really, really love it because, again, it's just so warm and inviting and, uh, <laughs> Um, I don't know, just very me, something I would wear. So I hope you guys like it too. I hope you guys like it as much as I do and can get some use out of it. It's honestly not too difficult. You just have to really take the time to blend everything out and you'll be good to go. So hope you guys enjoyed the video. Don't forget to give it a thumbs up if you did and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Remember, you are beautiful inside and out. I love you guys so much and I will see you next time.